Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard here. This morning, I'm lucky to be able to make an intro like this, but I want to go ahead and briefly explain what we're going to do today. Well, for one thing, we're going to fish for largemouth bass. We're going to be fishing millful and hydrilla up shallow, up on dirt. And the reason is, is because the water temperature, the surface temperature is 54 degrees on top. Um, these fish are coming into these bays, cuts, sloughs. They're pre-spawning. And the fish are somewhat scattered up. And I'm going to fish with some of the best baits for me to use. In other words, baits that I have a lot of confidence in. Now today, uh, all day today, the wind's going to come out of the east at 4 miles per hour. And it's going to be overcast. There's going to be periods of rain. And instead of throwing a spinner bait, a chatter bait, or even a lipless crankbait, Today, I feel like it warrants slow-moving baits. I'm going to be using a Zoom Trick Worm. Uh, I'm going to be fishing it weightless. I'm going to try a Yum Dinger, weightless. And, of course, a Texas Rig Lizard, made by Zoom, with a 1 16th ounce bullet weight. Now, I'm going to be fishing with just spinning gear, and that's it. Uh, my rods, well, I have a pair of Gander Mountain rods. They're six foot six long, medium action. Both of these reels are Daiwa's, and I have them loaded with 20, uh, not 20 pound, but a 10 pound test braid with a 10 pound test leader. Uh, my other rod, which I'm liking this rod, is called a Shimano Cellus Worm and Jig Rod. And I have it loaded with braid and the same setup right here. So it's basically real simple. I'm going to be fishing very slow today uh, because of the conditions. Um, an east wind just don't do me very much justice. It's hard to catch fish in an east wind usually. There's something to that. So I feel like this method of fishing real slow I get the job done I'm gonna start with a zoom trick worm this morning it's real early and uh, what was that surface temperature It's 54 degrees on top right here and this is nothing more than just a little cut right here and what I'm looking for right here and I hadn't seen any yet or shad I'm looking for activity on top of the water right now but I do see, well, okay, there's a shad right there that flipped right in front of me. Yep, another one come up. And there's two blue herons along this bank. So we got laugh. That's one thing I failed to mention. Blue herons, birds in an area hunt, hunting, they select their area as well. And there's another shad up there. So they could be some fish right here in this little cut. These cuts like this on any lake are great places for bass to hem up shad. And that's what they're doing right now. They're hemming up. This is actually just a flat is what I'm saying. The water is going to average anywhere from two to four foot deep right here. And I'm going to start off right here with a zoom trick worm and I work it very very slow this time of year I'll just pick it up and let it fall I don't care anything about the wind catching my line I'm a line watcher if that bass just so much as just breathes on that bait folks I'll know it I just got bit right there let's get him there he is Not a bad fish to start the morning off. Not at all. Chunky little largemouth. 
Look at here, look at here, look at here. That's Ned him. I don't want to weaken my knots right here. That fish ain't big enough to weaken any of my knots. There we go. Mm, there's about a two and a two and a quarter. He's awful fat. He might be two and a half. Large jaw. Let's put him back right here. Now that fish was up on dirt. Let's let him go. There he goes. Best part of whoa. Hey. Now I'm using a Palomar knot. I like a Palomar knot or a trilene knot. Maximizes the strength of your line. Tied right, they claim it to give you anywhere from 100 to 95%. But I'm working this bait real slow. Okay, see it's on the bottom right now. I'm just picking it up and letting it fall on the slack line. Watching that line. Okay, it's on the bottom. Picking it up. Letting it fall on the slack line. That way that fish, when he hits it, Especially on braid, he won't feel me. There's no stretch in braid. A bass can spit it out just as quick as they inhale the bait. Spinning outfit like this one or one that is comfortable for you, whatever you like, will throw these light baits a lot better than a bait caster. Oh, one hit it right there. Let's see if he'll come back. Yeah, he's there. I almost pulled it out of his mouth. And then he spit it. And then I let that bait just go ahead and fall. And he decided to commit back on it again. Come back here, boy. Okay. I believe I... God, he's a lot heavier than I thought. This time of year, even these little bitty fish like this, which he's probably about a two pounder, um, are heavy. They're at their maximum weight right now. That's a pretty fish, is he not? Let's let him go right here. Look at there. Picture of health. But yeah. All right, folks. I found the mother load once again on a honey hole. There is a bunch of fish in here this morning. Let's put us a little bit of crawfish scent yum on here. Now I'm going to go to this black lizard. I want y'all to look at the fish out here. They're going to hit this lizard. Some of them's pretty good fish too. Some of them just small schooling fish. That was a bit pretty good fish right there. And they are chewing. Let's make a, a cast right on the outside edge of that school to begin with. Golly. And they're eating shad. <laughs> oh, man, they'll eat this lizard, too. There's fish everywhere right here. And I mean good ones. Let's make us a little pitch right there. Golly. There's one right there. That's probably about the size of them right there. Most of them. Come on in here. Oh my goodness, what a fish. What a chunk. I want y'all to look. But there's some out there a lot bigger than that if we can get them back. I guarantee you. Let's let him go. Caught him on a lizard. Go on back, boy. They are. Busting shad, I'm talking about. Let's try this yum dinger made by yum. 
which is just another good bait no matter what. It's a dark color too. I believe they call this one Tequila Sunrise. I believe. But I'm fishing it weightless too right here. Let's see what it'll do. Let's make us a long cast. I fish this bait basically the same. I'll just pick it up. I'll let it make contact with the bottom and just pick it up. Now top water bait would be perfect right here. There's a fish. Yep. Look in here, right there at the boat too. Good one too. Flip him in here, boy. Man, oh man, oh man. Look up there, look up there, look up there. Whoa. Whoa. Let's let him go. Go on back. Them good fish right there. Lizard's doing a lot better than the young dinger is right now. There he is. Oh, gone. Almost messed up right there and moved. Mm -hmm. Golly, you hard pulling thing. You ain't gonna do nothing but pull, are you, old boy? Yes, sir. That's a chunk. Got him in the bottom of the lip right there. That's a little unusual. Well, look at there, what a chunk. That is a football now, folks. Beautiful bass. Large jowl. Let's let him go. Come back and get a little bit bigger in there, old boy. Ooh. I'm talking about nothing fancy. I don't like to fish real fancy because I ain't fancy and I don't know old big words like a lot of people. A lot of people know them old big words. I don't know. Can't hardly say them and I dang sure can't, can't spell them. Alright folks, let's rig another one. They've tore my trick worms all to pieces. Right here is the seam of the worm where the mold put the worm together is what I'm trying to say. Let's go right in the center and I go anywhere from 3 eighths to a half inch. I want it to cover my knot and then I'll reverse it, pull it through, flush the point right here with the worm and you can see the entry point right here stick it straight through the seam and out the other one that keeps that bait straight just like that and then just text pose it like that that'll get him let's catch another one There's one. Oh man. I reckon folks, there's one. Now that is a good one. That trick worm paid off right here. There we go. Man, when I set the hook into that fish right there, it was just no doubt about it. Where are you going, boy? Stop, 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 stop. That's a good fish right there. Good one. Come on. Hey, you stop it. Golly. What a chunk. And all I caught him on was just a little bit of cover right there. That's all it took to hold that fish out here on this flat. That's a good one. There ain't nothing wrong with that right there. Let's let him go. Oh, 
cheap zoom trick worms. You can get them down there at Wally World. They don't cost fifteen dollars a piece or thirty dollars a piece. They're, I think you can get them around two dollars and something a pack. Nearly three, but my goodness, they'll catch fish. I see another little object right out here in front of us. Let's try that. That could be a big fish relating to it. On these flats, a lot of times the bigger fish will relate to anything they can get around. It don't matter if the water's a foot and a half. Matter of fact, there's one right there. <coughs> One chunk after another. Look at there. They. I tell you what. It's just one after another, folks. Beautiful fish. Let's let him go. Come on back, boy. Whoa. Whoa. This water is real skinny right here. I have to make long cast. Real long cast. To get on the back. And that's another good thing about braid. Virtually no, st no stretch at all. And you can afford to make them long casts and still get a good, solid jolt on that fish. Whoop. There he is. Another good fish. I'm attracting some boats out here. Some attention. It's okay though, we're catching the fire out of them. Let's get him right back over here. I thought he was a little bigger than that. These fish has got the weight on them. When you set the hook, you know it. There ain't no give too much to them at all. It's just thump. Let's let him go. Pretty good fish right there. Gotta love it. Well, folks, I got run off by a thunderstorm, and it was a bad one. A lot of wind in it. But anyhow, real quickly, I want to give a special shout-out to Olivia Russell from Kentucky. She custom-made me some chucks right here. And I get a lot of questions about why do you wear Converse. Um, I've got a high arch in my foot, and the only way I can fish, I have to stand up. It's the only way I can keep my concentration level up to par. I've always been that way. But with Converse's and some Nikes, I can stand up from daylight to dark without my feet hurting. Um, it's a must. It's not to look cool because I'm not. But Olivia, thank you very much. We've got all sorts of fish on the sides of these shoes. They're custom made here and here. I gotta show them off and it says fishing machine on the back. Thank you very much darling. I needed them. I've wore my other ones out. And also real quickly we got two types of shirts and I appreciate y'all buying them because it keeps me on the water. It takes care of all my gas. This one says a sport second to none. Which is not a, it's not an opinion. It's a fact. The other shirt says, go fishing when you can because it's good for you on the back of it. And the front says, it's all about the thump. So thank y'all very much for everything y'all do. Hey. Go fishing when you can, but...
wanna call this good? Hurry!